Hello and welcome to the final In the Saddle with Dave and Daryl before the end of the year. It's Cheltenham. I'm Cheltenham Mental, so this should be an absolute doddle. So I'm sorry, Daryl, but we're going to end the series with me going 2 nil up. I don't think we need to talk any more about anything else other than the first race, which kicks off at 11.30, novices hurdle. I have this completely sewn up, so I'm going to let you go first, mate. No, no, Gordon, if you've got it sewn up, let's, let you go first. I can copy. I need some help this week. Happy days. Well, three running in with a winner's penalty, three don't. It's one of those that doesn't that I'm interested in. Make me a believer for David Pike. Got the wind up, got the tongue tie, so obviously can't breathe, can he? But he's a half-brother to King Roland. I think his form is actually pretty steady. Even his point form is pretty good. Um, he's definitely going in. Under that, the fact that he gets the six pounds from those top three as well, I reckon he could be like, fairly well in in this. Any news of the ones that carries penalties, I think it's got the strongest form. So I'll just play the top and the bottom in this race, and I am through. I'm surprised you think that that make believe uh, make me believe, but I do think his form is fairly okay, and he did run well at Lingfield behind Bear Grylls, but that race ain't really working out very well. Um, I think he might have a little bit to find here. You're going to need to run up to a mark of about 130, I think, to win this. Absolutely sure you are. Uh, any news for me, I think, has already run up to that mark of 130. So I think he is definitely going to be in the first uh, in the first two. Um, lucky one is very hard to weigh out. It's an interesting one for Nichols. The time was okay at Subtle. Form is nothing to shout about. And I'm just wondering... He's just, he sort of almost recorded the racing most trade of one, two, nine, sort of out of the blue. Um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of reason for that. So I'm a little bit dubious there, but I do think Lucky won with a strong pace um, and this stiff uphill finish might be, uh, might be the one to keep on side. So I'm going to stick with a two with a penalty day. That's any news and uh, Lucky won. Oh, you will need a Lucky one, mate, for that horse to get a good run through there. Definitely a bit on and off. Pace will suit, but... Uh... A bit stuffed there. Anywho, second leg, I'm still in. Maybe irrelevant for Daryl. Novice's chase, three mile, one furlong. So it's a proper trip here. Um, I think it's quite a pretty, uh, quite a tidy little race. I know for a fact one horse you're going to put in, but unfortunately he stays worse than the British summer does. So do not put hold the note in, Daryl, but you probably will. Oh. Happy so lucky. Laird Devont are going in for me, and I'm taking a wild punt on Fabulous Saga. Long layoff. I just think. It's got a bit of a chance and what could be a bit of a shock leg. This is an absolute stone cold banker of the day, this, this race. Happy Go Lucky absolutely wins this. It is a stone cold banker. The step up to three miles is definitely going to suit. He's, he's had Laird Devon in behind over um, at Cheltenham previously, uh, went behind Tom Hill by three and a quarter lengths. That hurdle form is rock solid. He jumps really nicely. He was only touched off by Getaway Trump on ground too quick at Baconham last time. He is an absolute stone cold good thing in this race. David Bass cannot do a thing wrong for me. Um, he's fantastic. Laird de Bont is a plodder, lacks a turn of foot, is really slow, jumps really nicely. But the fact that he jumped so well last time and only beat Milanford at Exeter is really, really just disappointing for me. I was expecting him just to, to pull away really, really impressively, but he didn't. The way he's done hits every single fence that he sees. So I'd struggle to put him ahead of Cabby Go Lucky. Fabulous side has been off a thousand days. And hold the note, doesn't stay this trip. So happy go lucky is absolute stone cold good thing, Dave. Banker material, one going in, happy go lucky. Fair play to you, mate. Um, probably the next race, the handicap hurdle, one of the biggest fields of the day. Looks like it probably could be the trappy leg for you, but I'm fairly confident, although I'm going to play sensible, I want to get another win up, putting a tiny bit of cover in. The sensible part is Benny's Bridge. Oh, Death. my God. <laughs> of like, course you he are. He didn't run last time I put him up. Again, he was entered in the Great Wood, didn't run. Like they're, they're, We know this mark is definitely winnable for him. They're waiting for conditions to be right. If the mark wasn't happy for this horse, they would have run him, let him run poor and get it dropped down. This horse is definitely winning the 1240. But if I've got it wrong, I'm going to put a tiny bit of cover in because Tegarek, Kevin Brogan, John Joe O'Neill will be there or thereabouts, can't win. And then one at a little bit of a wild price because I quite like the drop in handicap mark now. Although I'm a little bit worried about the ground if it gets soft. Who cares? Torcello's going in. So Benny's Bridge, Tegarek and Torcello. 
and I am through. I tell you what, we could have had a couple of risky little legs there, and I could be absolutely flying on a solo <laughs> ticket. I do think Tegarek is probably place material, definitely. There is another one in here I'm going to put in. I'm not going to put Tegarek in, but there's another one I'm going to put in, right? And he is definitely place material, but whether or not he fancies winning or not, it's a bit like you. Whenever you don't fancy doing your prep for this video, you just don't bother. That's how this horse runs. That is Nordic combined, right? He had a brilliant opportunity at Taunton. They took four of the hurdles out for him. So he only had to jump four hurdles around. And he still got beaten by Calvadoos. He hit the front and just turns his head away to say, oh, I don't want to go out there on my own. I don't want to go any further. As soon as a horse comes up on the side of him, he'll run on. He is so quirky, it's ridiculous. But he does like it here. He's seven pounds higher than when fourth behind Repetito last year. And if you go back and watch that race, he didn't want to win that day either. And he had to stand side rail with him as well. He is a nightmare. But he's definitely got it in him off this mark for 130. He's going to be in the frame there or thereabouts. So... I, I'm hoping that he uh, he fancies getting in the top three. Marlborough Sounds is the other one. Cheek pieces, first time. I do like that move by Amy Murphy. Think um, he that could sharpen him up just a little bit. He was a good second at uh, whether being behind Francham, although he did make Francham look a little bit like a champion hurdle horse at the last. But he did stick on quite nicely. I'm wondering if he wants to step up and trip. So uh, the step up he'll finish should, should suit him well. But he's got a lovely attitude, unlike Nordic combined. And, and he'll be staying up on up that hill. So Marlborough Sound is going in. And the other one, you're going to laugh, but I'm going to give him a chance, is Roland Ward. Um, I know we've discussed this horse. I know I said I wasn't giving him a chance, but I am. Big time Moya Kempton last year on soft ground. Um, and then ran here at Shelton behind Galahad Quest in the grade two. He should have won that day. I know that's not the strongest of races, but he should have won that day, but for being hampered and completely losing his foot in that, absolutely no chance after that. The horse in there who finished second went on to finish second in the Boodles. So, you know, if, if you took away that five and put a one there and then you could forgive his return run at Huntington on good ground behind Wild Max where he looked like he was desperately in need of soft ground and desperately in need of the run. I think a mark of 129 looks fair. So Roland Ward, the crazy Nordic combined and Marlborough Sounds, just the three. I think one of those three are going to be in a place. And so that's, that's going to get me through, Dave. You do, you do <laughs> really, we're, we're trying to pick horses to place in a race, not looking for replacements for ourselves on the show. These horses are more inconsistent than we are. You've had a mare, <laughs> mate, never mind. Right, the 150, uh, mare's handicap chase, what a thrill this will be. I've definitely got to put some cover in it. One that I think is a monster, monster prize that I really expect to run well is Sweet Adair. I'm really keen on that one. So Sweet Adair is definitely going in. And then just because I've, I feel like I've played it loose enough early on that I can get some cover. Ariane for Philip Hobbs is going in. Nick up, I love the horse. And it's got a claimer on board. So I think weight-wise, ran well the last day. And then Agent Valdez, Fergal O'Brien. I mean, I don't think this is any kind of a well-beater, but she's improved for offence. Don't think the Leicester race was very good the last time she won, but gets in here three pounds well in. They like it round here, don't they? So I'd be annoyed if I didn't put her on the slip. Four for me in the 115. All right, I'm going to put Everlane's in here. Um, pulled up last time. Was disappointed in seven foot strap first. <laughs> you've got to make a few... Uh, You've got to make a few, um, you've got to forgive a few runs rather. But it's definitely well handicapped on the mark of 115 on the balance for form. They've put David Bass, which could be significant. She's now had a wind up, uh, and I do think she she has got to go well, surely. She's a big, big price, but uh, she's going in along with Black Tulip. I think Black Tulip is uh, definitely going to be in a place here, and Ariane is the other one. Uh, I'm not a massive fan on Dickey on Chasers. And I'm not a massive fan of horses carrying 12 stone free, but the fact that they've chosen not to put a claimer on Ariane could speak um, a bit of intent, really, of what they think of this horse off a mark of 126. So those are the three Ariane, uh, Everlanes, and Black Tulip. It feels like this week we're essentially just naming all the horses in the race because we are not agreeing on anything. I like it, mate, because I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm uber confident this week. So, I mean, your horses might get in and around there, but. Hmm. You're definitely in a good mood, aren't you? Christmas has put you in a good mood. Anyway, the grade two rescheduled Peterborough Chase at Cheltenham. I love the fact that this has been rescheduled at Cheltenham because most of the runners were running in this race because it wasn't at Cheltenham and they don't like Cheltenham. So it's a fad of a race and the market will hold up from what happened at Huntingdon. The selections will hold up because of what happened at Huntingdon. 
It's a crazy. The easiest way to play this race is bang in Kalashnikov, supreme winner. I like him over the middle trip. What? He off the mark that he's on. And Fanny and Destrival ran so well the last day. Those two, 100% getting in the first three. If we get a non-runner, I'd be a tiny bit worried. But the others that are towards the head of the market ain't got a clue. Uh, well, ain't got a chance at Cheltenham. Uh, Fanny and Destreville, completely agree with you there, mate. I did have an inkling when I put him up uh, last time um, at Cheltenham by Magic Saint that he did probably want two, two, mile, two and a half miles. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad we, we get to see him step up to that trip today. I do like him. There's very few negatives with Fanny and Destreville, whereas there is a lot of negatives with a lot of the other horses in this race. Yeah. Um, Clondor Castle shouldn't be... Uh, underestimated I don't think but Fanny and Destravel and I'm going to stick in Mr no I'm not just Fanny and Destravel banker material in this race it's not going to be out of places mate not yeah I agree fair play to you we're in a bit of agreement there so we're now going to move on to the finale the final leg it is seven runners at the moment so could be looking at two places that's the thing with these races on this Friday that there's a few smallish fields where I don't know, this, it's, going to be, it's going to be a decent dividend and I'm definitely halfway there to winning it. This leg here, I, I mean, I definitely feel like I'm just covering all angles by sticking this trio in. But West Approach goes in. I just love West Approach. Like, he is a lovable rogue. He's like a naughty little nephew, isn't he, that you don't mind having him round for a few hours because you know you can give him back. West Approach, not affiliated <laughs> to him. We can have a little go on him this time. The trip worries me a tiny bit. I feel like this is the ceiling of where he wants to be. But... He's going in. I think he could be there, thereabouts. Black Quarter, I'm a tiny bit worried about giving this much weight away to some of the field. But Black Quarter's got to be bouncing back to some sort of form at some point. I was pretty disappointed of how he ran at Ascot. And I think the unshipping might have done him a favour rather than having to go through the whole of that race, which I think could have been a, a negative for him. And then Court Maid that comes over from Ireland, can't not put that horse in. I know it's a quick turnaround, but just looks absolutely thrown in if it's still fit for it. So that trio... For me to, tr well, I can't treble up on the last day, but I'll double up. I'm going to be on for an absolute treat this week. Done, mate. Uh, I'm going to put Court Maiden there. I think every man and their bloody dog's going to be on this horse to win this race. So I don't know about a win, uh, win bet from that sort mm. of perspective. But uh, Court Maid, I don't think you can uh, leave, leave her out. Uh, Commodore is the one I really like in it. Um, I hope that this horse doesn't want a flat trap. But time figure Commodore ran at Haydock um, on seasonal return was outstanding it was really 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 good and um if he comes on for the, for that run there then i'll tell you what he's going to take some stopping um in here off this low weight of 10 stones two christ um they're the only two that's going in for me but i really fancy commodore to, to win this superb so we've got some varying opinions in most of the races we've got some confidence selections from either side of the bench we'll obviously be sticking our syndicates up so you can join either mine or daryl's or both or none i feel like we've given plenty of food for thought for every single race in there so if you want to build your own slips do that you can play solo or if you want to build a bigger slip get a few people involved you can create your own syndicates as well as i say this is the last episode we'll be doing for 2020 so have a merry christmas a happy new year and enjoy all the winnings from my winning syndicate this week good night god bless <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.